Hi, we're sitting here in Form Z version 7.0.0.0, probably another .0, and um, today we're going to show you one of the specialty operations, um, the terrain tool. And on our screen, we have a collection of two-dimensional lines created using a Benzier spline tool or point spline tool. Uh, which is second column, second tool down. The modifiers for creating these lines were all done in the 2D modifier, 2D surface, as you can see displayed in the tool option box on my right. To invoke the terrain tool, you have to engage it. Now, there's some properties that must be uh, administered when you create a 2D surface. Notice that the perimeter line of my contour here is continuous. There's no breaks from where it was started at and where it was completed. It has to be an enclosed, not an overlapping, but an enclosed shape. All my bisecting lines must start outside of that perimeter and end outside of the perimeter, unless the exception being an enclosed interior contour. Now the tool is in the second column, fifth tool down in the specialties and it's located on the first row here, terrain model. Now in the tool option box you want to make sure you're setting a new interval and you can adjust that interval from you know the existing contour. Now right here we're starting at one foot and each interval will go up 10 feet. Again, we can adjust that. There are different types of models. Uh, we have a meshed, triangulated, and stepped. I'm going to display the stepped one uh, because it will show you the progression of our different intervals as we select. Now, to invoke the tool, we hold down the shift key because we're going to use multiple lines and I'm going to click from left to right on this example and I'm going to overlook and not select my enclosed shape here just my four bisecting lines and let's see what happens now they're selected now with them still selected now I click without holding any keys down the contour line and clicked it twice and now we can see the steps created. I'll go into a shaded display. It started at one foot which is our starting height. This was our first click on this bisecting line. It went up 10 feet. This was our second selection. Remember we were holding the shift key from the beginning before we selected any of those bisecting lines. This was our third step and our fourth step. Notice that it was progressed sequentially on my selection process. I'm going to go back to wireframe. I'm going to undo. Let's try that in a different method now. I'm going to hold down the shift key. I'm still in the terrain tool and I'll start from the left. I'll go outside, right, inside, left, inside right. I'll click on my object line and I'll go into a render so you can display that. Starting line was here. Our first click was 10 foot. Second click was 20 foot and you can see we have a 30 foot raise coming into this because of our sequence of selection. Again we're still in the stepped model here. Going back to wireframe. I'll undo, get back to my base parameters. Now in this case I'm going to involve this piece here. Now again holding down the shift key I'll select my first one, second, here's my third, 
I'm going to get that circle. And we'll go from right to left on my interior lines. Now I need to select my shape. There we go. Oh, I didn't I must have missed on the click. Let's start the selection again. Holding on the shift key, hitting my bisecting lines. It does not like my interior shape. Now I wonder to diagnose that. Um, I don't see any breaks as I zoom in, but let me delete that, make another interior line, and see if I can get that to work. Again, 2D surface modifier. Looks like I have a completed circle there. Let me zoom out. Go to my terrain tool. Hold down the shift key. Hit my object. Contour. Okay, it likes my new shape. Let me go into a surface render to display this. I'm going to shade it full display. And let me move this down a little bit. You can see my one foot starting line, my first click, second click. We'll collect with this. This came up another 10 feet. That's at our 30 foot marker. This is at our 40 foot height overall. And I'll leave that selection where it is. I'll just uh, see if I can change that directly to a mesh. Get an idea what that looks like. I'll go to a triangulate it. Back to a mesh. Take a look at that in render zone. You can see how it makes a nice smooth terrain shape. By changing our surface style, we can make that into a mountain or a volcano or any other type of terrain that we were interested in. Or for any odd shaped developments, um, we can use that in a creation. And that's our experimentation with the terrain tool. Thank you very much. Good luck.